Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Lock and Key Season 2, Episode 7. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we start off with, you know, the sad notions, you know, where everything ended off last episode. Uh, Duncan and the kids have to burn all of, um... Aaron stuff because they have to sell the story that she left because no one's going to naturally find her body. Once again, I don't know if they could go back to that maze and dig up her body. And even if they did, there'd be too much attention around it asking how she died. There'd be just there'd just be too many questions so that no one can really answer right now. Or it might just be like because her body's going to the earth, like there's no amount of digging that could. It just kept getting drawn deeper and deeper to the earth. So there's no way for them to get it. Either way. Uh, they have to sell the story so that no one asks any questions. At the very least, well, the bank will know that Aaron never came to pick up her stuff. But from uh, Nina's perspective, it's like, oh, yeah, like she left. Oh, you know, not very good at goodbyes. But um, all of them um, are getting prepared. It's like for them, it's like, you know, it sucks because Aaron was a good person. She was a nice person. She didn't deserve this. And so Kenzie's like, we end this now. So they're laying out their plan. Obviously, you have Eden kind of telling Gabe, like, what if they know more than you, you think? You know, and she keeps questioning him and Gabe can't stand it. Because he's like, I guess for him, it's like, I'm the head honcho, but also I was the first one here. I've been here for a long time. You're the newcomer. You work for me. So, like, shut up and accept what I'm saying because you're acting like you're smart. Like, you. that's the thing. He's calling Eden stupid and stuff like that, even though he's the one that got played. He didn't see what was coming. She, at the very least, was like, yeah, maybe something's not right here. But it's like because Gabe is so far up his own ass that he believes like, oh, I'm top dog. I've got it all figured out. I've had them fooled this entire time. There's just no way they saw through me. Too bad he doesn't know they saw through him because of Eden's, like, legitimate stupidity. Like, if she hadn't gotten crazy drunk at the party. Granted... I mean, it wouldn't have it would have made it a, wouldn't have made it as easy as it was. It still had its complications because inside of her mind, her mind started fighting back. Because even though she was unconscious, I guess that thing inside of her, the demon, is enough, conscious, aware enough uh, to strike back. Or it could just been like, oh, you're an invader in our mind, unwelcome. We're gonna strike back. Whatever the case may be. So she kind of led them to be in a position to know what's what. So. He ends up putting away the echo key, and he only ends up taking the chain key with him. She's like, why don't you take all the keys? But he's, I think for him, it's like, I'm not stupid, because it's like, why don't we just go after him right now? It's like, because they actually have keys on them that can be used weapons against us, almost like, dummy. Like, you know, and obviously, like, Eden keeps pushing him. He's like, you know what? Keep pushing me, and we're going to have a problem. So stop second-guessing me. Stop saying this. Just go along with what I say. I'm the one in charge. And she kind of has to say yes to it, so... Their plan is to get Gabe back into the well because the moment he crosses that line, he'll disappear because that's how the echo key situation is. Like once you cross that line again, you did the echo. That's how you kill the echo. That's why they've always been adamant about because I was like, how does that defeat him? Like how did just putting him back in the well is like, is that just a surefire way to lock him up again? It's like, no, that's just how the echo key works. That's why he needed the uh, anywhere key to leave because once he passes the threshold on either side, that makes him disappear. So he couldn't leave through the echo gate without disappearing. That's why he waited the entire time for the anywhere key. So that's the uh, interesting thing about it. So Duncan's kind of kept on reserve. He's just meant to be bait, but you know he wants to do more, especially if it helps take down Gabe. So all the while this is happening... Uh, we do find out about the situation with Josh where he learns from um, like an email again about like, oh, uh, someone's like, oh, I know exactly who stole it. So he confronts one of the students. It's Hobby's buddy he hangs around. And then it turns out Hobby's the one that sent him the email being like, oh, yeah, I know who stole your rock or whatever. Like Hobby was messing with him. And obviously Nina saw how like angry he got. And he's like, yeah, like. He talks about why it's so important. And in this moment, you go like, right. You can almost see, um, sadly, his obsession with death. Essentially, like, essentially, he wants to, he talks to Nina about, right, the door and everything. So he's aware of the door because of the journals. But he's thinking that this piece of metal will be the key to getting it's like well it's not the key you actually need because the kids have the omega key that you need to get through the black door but he thinks it what it's like oh a power a place of like a 
the beyond is what he sees it as. And he's like, there's enough power there, you know, supernatural power. And Nina interprets this as right. How, why I came to, um, Matheson in the first place was to find something. I need an answer, something to kind of help with my grief, like to make their, make it not just something random. Yes, there was something bigger at play here, but Nina is in the dark about that. She, she tried to get answers, but couldn't. And so she thinks that was just all her paranoia. But, he talks about, like, what if there was a way to see the person you care about most? You want to see Renner? Wouldn't you want to know that he's in some place that you could see him again? And Nina's like, I know. And it's just like, but it's about, um, it's okay to lose yourself in all of this. But as long as you're, lose yourself in it a little bit. But it's about being able to find yourself again. Obviously, using the advice Joe gave to her in season one back to Josh. But, like, the moment they've introduced that, you're like, right, he's definitely going to be set up as someone. He's going to be someone outside of the demons who's going to try and use this, like, situation to his own benefit. It comes from a place of, I want to see the person I care about. Like, it's just, like, right, being, like, the tragedy of losing someone you care about uh, gives birth to villains. Now, is he a villain? No. But he's probably going to eventually become one because he's probably going to end up opening the black door thinking it's going to give him all the answers and not knowing the truth about what's beyond it. He's going to end up being possessed by a demon and becoming a new antagonist is probably uh, where that's all heading. It seems like they're potentially setting the stage for that. Um because he is someone, much like Rendell, all this started because of Rendell's obsession. We'll get into that later, but you can see that Josh's obsession with that, like, it's probably going to lead down that route. You know, the road to hell uh, time and time again, paved uh, with good intentions. So, they were able to trick Eden and Gabe over, and it's like, oh, Eden, why don't you stay downstairs? Like, uh, you know, oh, Kinsey's putting on her, you know, her master class in acting, and be like, hey, I'm so glad you guys can make it. Eden wants to help out. Really? Is that you doing it? Oh, man, that's great. And then Tyler and Bodie are just playing. Bodie's like, oh, we is so much fun. Yeah. And it's like, wow, they are selling this like crazy. And so they go, like, do craft. All like, right, we're going to do craft uh, services with Eden. And we saw Jamie looking at the house earlier. I was like, oh, dog, you're going to like get mixed up in this and you're going to probably have worse timing. Didn't correlate in my head. Of course, they bring Jamie into the fold because she does have the dollhouse. So uh, I love that uh, Bodie did like a magic trick. I, I was wondering like where the where the twist was going to be with this. I was like, where, where is it going to be? What's it going to be like? I figured as much. I thought what was going to happen is like, oops, you didn't see the grape because the grape isn't any other. But I was like, I didn't get the point. But I love that he points at her. Look. And then Jamie, using the dollhouse, puts a giant glass over her. And I love Bodie giving her the double middle fingers. Aloha! I'm like, yeah! And she's so pissed and she got, uh, cause she's so pissed because she got tricked. And as and I love that Bodie, and he's like, yeah, you were like, you didn't see it coming. You were like, ah, 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 I'm like, he's such a little kid about it. But the problem is he underestimated how strong the demons are. Because they've never really gone fully toe-to-toe -to -toe with the demons. And it hasn't even been something I've touched on. Um, but they do have superhuman strength. Um, all of them do. So, like, uh, she was able to start, like, she was punching her way to the glass. Given enough time, despite the glass and everything, she would have eventually broken through. And even Bodhi was like, oh, crap, when it started cracking. But at the same time, and it almost seems like they wrote this on purpose, but I don't think Gabe thought too much of it, of, like, oh, yeah, here's, uh, the monster took on the form of this person. And it's like, here's, uh you know, the monster of the movie, uh, in the form of the human. It was like, I don't think he correlated, but I was like, they had to do that on purpose, but I guess it's just like, I guess it's like, you wouldn't think too much of it. It's just kind of like, right. You just write up the script. But then you do notice that Gabe's like, huh, where's Doug's? Where's Zadie? Like it starts to mean like, oh, where? and they try to make excuses. Cause it's like, yeah, probably don't, but it's like, all right, he doesn't think too much of it because, once again, he thinks he's so on top of things. And Kinsey is there to kind of ease his mind enough. So it's like, cool, got everything planned out. They used the Anywhere key and open it to the, um, to the uh, whale house. If it wasn't for that bird, they would have caught him off guard because Kinsey has the Hercules belt. And she tried to push him in. Like, Scott grabs him. So does... Um, uh, Tyler, they all try pushing him in. You're in this moment. You're like, yeah, you know it's not going to work, but man, it's it's like Thanos in that glove. Oh, we got to the tip of them fingers. Until, uh, but granted, no one screwed this up. It's just, he did come prepared. He had the chain, so he was able to kind of get them off of him. Plus, it's like, once again, he's got superhuman strength, so he's knocking everybody back. Um, 
And sadly, uh, Josh comes home at the worst time, so he stops Jamie from what she's doing. Plus, he takes the key. He's like, where'd you get this key from? Which she can't say. And it's kind of like, now he's got access to that. So, meaning eventually, he's going to notice that he's going to probably try out the key for himself. And because Jamie's probably going to eventually, she might either, she might break eventually and tell him the truth because of, um, because it's her dad and she doesn't want to lie to him or anything. Like, he's like, just tell me the truth or she's going to get in more trouble. Or he's just going to discover it on his own. Either way, that's... Because I think that's probably going to make him, like, go down a route of finding out, like, oh, there's truth to this. The kids know more than they're letting... Like, it, who knows what's going to... Like, where that's necessarily going to go. But, sadly, um... Duncan didn't get to use the matchstick key against him because Eden got free, uh, chasing after Bodie. And Gabe has got Bodie chained up. Uh, and I, I figured as much, like, if anything, Bodie was going to be used as, uh, leverage against Duncan, so, it's kind of, yeah, and it's like, but before they could leave, like, Eden's, like, following along as they, like, uh, go use the Anywhere Key, because back in, uh, Dodge's possession, but Eden gets the boot, because for him, it's like, no, 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 you screwed up too many times. He doesn't know that she's the reason why this all went down, but he's kind of right to do it because it's like, no, you weren't here to have my back. You actually got tricked and trapped first. I was close to it, but I broke free from my situation. Yeah, you broke free from yours, but it's not like, no, you're too much of a... I mean, it's it's funny considering... Because she even said, like, I told you so. She's like, I told you they were in on it. So that her being right probably pissed them off even more. But either way, it's like, you're too much of a loose end. It's like, she tried to warn you multiple times and you didn't want to listen. And I guess that's why he... That's double reason, because it's like, right, you screw up all the time. And I, I'm sure on some level, Gabe's like, I'm sure the only reason why they found out is because of you. So, uh, I love that Kinsey and Eden uh, tussle. I mean, to be fair, they, they had their bad blood last season, but they were in a better place, granted. They never had an opportunity to really be friends, considering, like, you know, Eden was possessed, like, before the end of the season. But, um... Yeah, but it's just interesting, like, they kind of had their issues at the beginning, and they kind of repaired it, but now they're at, at it, but once again, it's not the real Eden, so, granted, she was going to, like, got a glass to Scott's neck, and I was like, that was, could have gone bad either way, but luckily, she just cut him and left him, so she's out in the wild, what that looks like, well, she can't go to Gabe anymore, because it's like, right, she's on her own, plus, uh, she can't be out and about too because the locks will come after her. So she's kind of out in a way. Like I'm curious to see what that does. What what is she going to do now? Because she's all alone. She doesn't have Gabe's support. The thing is though, and this might come back to bite Gabe. She knows exactly where he hid all the keys. So just to screw him over because he screwed her over. Most likely when Gabe gets back, for him it's like the key he gets, which we'll talk about later, is all he needs. But it probably sucks that she has literally every other key you've got. So currently the only ones he'll have are the the chain key, the new key. Well, I guess we'll just call it the demon key. That might just be what it legitimately is called. Those are The name of those keys are pretty straightforward. He has that and the anywhere key. So those are only three, but we know like the echo key was taken. Uh, we knew he had the music box key. I don't know what other... I can't think uh, off the top of my head. Oh, the identity key. Uh, so those were all in his possession. So I'm assuming Eden took it. And that's going to be complicated too, especially if Eden has the identity key. She can make herself look like, well, someone different. It doesn't have to be like, because obviously it doesn't work if it's someone that's real. You have to make yourself look like someone that doesn't exist. So, but it still make her harder to uh, track down. So, uh, but I get the feeling like that's potentially what Eden would do. Like it'd be her ultimate revenge against him, but maybe he won't stress about it too much. Maybe he will. We'll have to wait and see. He might send like his other cronies out there to like fetch Eden, find her, and uh, get the new uh, other get those keys back. But nevertheless, Duncan is being forced to uh, make the new key, and obviously Duncan is like, right, I need to know what your attention is, and obviously you know the confirmation of right the. The keys have to be made with lock blood. So, but it turns out what this key is, like I said, the demon key. Um, it was interesting, too, because Gabe's perspective on things, and this was what I was kind of referencing earlier, where he was like, oh, you want to blame me for, like, everything that's going down? But he's like, honestly, this is Rendell's fault. He's like, how? If Rendell wasn't so obsessed with learning how to make a key 
uh, he would have never opened a black door. I never would have possessed Lucas and like everything that happened is on him. And it's like, but he's like, I don't even know if it's Lucas is in there, but I don't appreciate you being in his body. Like Lucas, he was funny. He was kind. And it's like, oh, you think I'm funny? You think I'm kind? You know? Um, and I love that Bodie's like, oh, I'm going to stop you. He's like, oh, stop me. Like you thought you beat me with that lightsaber of yours when your brother and sister threw Ellie into the back behind the door. He's like, yeah, sure. But, um, I thought that was an interesting situation of like it kind of gloating like that, trying to make it seem like this is all their fault. But it's like interesting. I wonder what made, well, because Rendell became obsessed with the black door. So he must have like, well, because we know that Nina gave like some of like the lock books, like some of that, because the kids haven't looked through some of that stuff because they don't know it's there. That there's probably Duncan might have some idea, but that might just been a Rendell thing. Like, Rendell probably had more of an idea because he's the one that became obsessed with. So some of the others who aren't around anymore, like we know Mark was doing his investigation to the keys because some of like the stuff he was working on burned up with him when he uh, killed himself with the matchstick key at the beginning of season one. So probably him and Rendell probably kept, kept in contact about some of the key stuff. I don't know if Ellie was majorly in the loop. I mean, she was talking to Mark about Rendell's death and everything, but... But regardless, um, because I was wondering, like, because that means, like, his investigation into the black door, into the Omega door, was because he knew he would ha he'd be able to find what he needed to make what would eventually be the memory key. So, it makes me wonder, um, did, did that knowledge exist somewhere in those books, give him the idea about, oh, like, the metals and how to make a new key for that to be you know, a thing. Obviously, they weren't, like, obviously, there's not enough in the reports to know, like, oh, be careful if these things possess you. It's something. They didn't know that, but he knew that what was behind that door could lead to making a key so they, they could hold. So, it was, once again, it's that selfishness of just, like, right, you just want to keep magic for yourself, and that set everything in motion, you know? Uh, because if they had never done that, Lucas would have never gotten possessed, would have never led to Ellie. I mean, that was even a thing, too, that gave us, like, oh, Ellie was pathetic of trying to, like, hold on to me or just like she was just you know a means to an end you know it's just he also talked a little about like what was beyond the door he's like it's chaos and we can it's filled with chaos but we consume said chaos and he basically says that this world has the potential to be reborn and consumed so i guess it's about making this world theirs filling it with chaos and because maybe it's just because maybe it's kind of a thing of they've devoured as much of their world as they can. And now they need a new world to devour. That there's so much in this world to devour. But it turns out Javi is the... Um, the... Um, the... Uh, guinea pig. And it turns out this demon key has the potential to basically... Uh, possess anyone with a demon. So basically Gabe can make an entire army... And it makes sense where the lock would be on the human body, on the spine, because that's where these demons attach themselves. They attach themselves to the person's spine. So it makes sense for that to be where uh, the keyhole would be located when you're um, activating it. Because um, I was wondering if like the Omega door was his, his way of doing it, but it is the thing of you would still need to find willing people. You'd have to get them down to the cavern to be possessed. But like I said, I didn't know if it was the purpose of making more keys or be able to, but it's like, no, it's break, make, uh, bring more of his brethren over. Cause I'm wondering like the moment he does that, is it basically sucking up a soul from beyond the black door and jacking it into the body or like it's worn being born inside of like Javi in that moment. I'm curious how that a hundred percent works, but that was a pretty, like, I, I didn't know what, I think it was just showing like, cause the demon key not only gives him like, not only do they like, possess these people with demons but it makes it so that they are 100 percent under his control because eden had too much free will so maybe that's why he wanted the key to specifically make it so that whoever like you turn to a demon has to serve you like it maybe it specifically works as whoever has the key and turn someone into a demon, the demons have to uh, serve them, because he was like, no, 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 I'm not about to let another Eden happen, she had too much free will, she was a bum, it's like, she questioned me too much, I need someone complete obedience, so she, he had Javi, like, bash his head in a couple of times, I didn't know what for, for, for what purpose, but it was just to show, like, right, I have full and other control of you, so... Bodie and Duncan get let go, but now that this key is all he needs, he plans on killing them, that's why I'm like, 
it it serves a purpose of like right uh he doesn't really need any other key but those keys could still be used against him. They're the only things that can match him. Granted, if I'm able to make an army of my own, I don't have to worry about it. But I'm sure he's not going to be too happy about potentially Eden stealing them. We'll see how what his reaction is. I, I think he'll still be pissed knowing that Eden like stabbed him in the back like that. Granted, you stabbed her in the back first, leaving her um, to the locks. But Scott, Tyler, and... Kinsey make their way to where uh, Bodie and them are. Luckily, Kinsey and Tyler showed up in time before Javi could like kill Duncan. And so, luckily, they took off with Scott. But, you know, Javi's like, oh, they got away. But it's like, right. Gabe's like, it doesn't matter. Because for him, it's like, no matter where they run, like, now with this key, he has an entire army at his disposal. It's like, right. So, let's go make some new friends. So, uh... Gabe got an upgrade, and obviously there's no more hiding anything anyway. So now that it's out there in the open, got to let everybody know. Got to let all the uh, uh, Sabinis know. Now they need to know about Magic, too. It's like they need to learn to stay away from Gabe. Problem is you enter that territory with Jackie because Jackie doesn't know about. And even if you warn her, she's going to end up forgetting again. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they handle this going forward into the next episode. Um like I said, he's armed and dangerous with this new key. So I, I'm curious to kind of learn, like, like it's like I brought up before, like, what are the real ins and outs? Like, is it actually pulling a demon from behind a black door, or is it just kind of possessing them? Like, is it almost like it it kind of replicates what's inside of him? Is he more so like cloning himself in people, or is he actually pulling demons from the other side? I don't, I don't know. I, it's I'm, I'm really curious to find out whether they'll really go into the ins and outs of like the very specifics on how that works. Maybe Doku will give an idea because he had to be the one that focuses the intention. I wonder, did he implant anything else in the keys? Because it seems like the keys can only have one unique ability. So it's not like... I was wondering if like Duncan put like a... I don't think you can put like a certain other thing to it. Oh, also, let, let's not forget too... He also has, like, he hasn't used it since then, but him and Eden made that other key which just liquefies people, so that's not a good thing. I'm assuming that's got to be amongst the keys that Eden has, so she probably has that key too, so that's uh, something to consider as well. So that, that key's still at play. That's an instant kill key. I don't know if there's any, like, time or frame of, like, it has to be held against someone for a couple seconds or the moment it touches you, you're dead. I mean, the uh, matchstick key can pretty much work like that. You just have to, like, stab someone and just go... Ch and you end up killing them, so it's pretty instantaneous, but we'll have to wait, like I said, wait and see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, little light to the force, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.